Why? Hello and welcome everybody and uh, good morning as well. So today I wanted to just let you guys know why I have decided to start again in SSF Expedition instead of playing uh, regular trade league and also why... Oh, hi Mini K, come here buddy. And also why um, I kind of haven't really enjoyed this league very much. It's more so not necessarily the league's fault. It's more of like the state of the game, I guess you could say, if that makes more sense. Uh, so I have restarted an SSF and the main reason for this change is to kind of just get a different perspective of PoE. Oftentimes when I make my builds in Trade League, I'm it feels like I'm kind of competing with what other builds are able to do because you're always capable of just trading. Whereas in SSF, I feel like I'm more so creating my own character and like kind of going on the journey and trying to like mold that journey however I want but like it also kind of depends on what drops it's just a really different change of pace and change of even like your brain just kind of registers things differently in SSF uh, at least that's kind of the way I do it. I know maybe that's a little bit weird but I don't know that's how I've, I've kind of always been to avoid burnout um, or becoming jaded with a game I really like to kind of look at it from multiple perspectives and that's what SSF really allows me to do now, sadly, I did not realize that I was playing a build that, like, a bunch of other streamers were playing. Uh, I did not know everybody was playing uh, Exsanguate Trap along with Seismic Trap. I originally wanted to play, um, I originally wanted to play Crit Fire Trap, or, um, if not Crit Fire Trap, I wanted to play Crit Lightning Trap, and with Fire Trap, it was either going to be Flamethrower Trap for single target, or Fire Trap was just going to be my single target, and Lightning Trap was going to be clear. Uh, I was thinking of Lightning Trap Lightning Spire, I was thinking of Fire Trap Flamethrower, I was thinking of Exsanguinate Reap, which was my original uh, original goal of what I wanted to do, but uh, Exsanguinate Reap did not work because you do not get blood charges on the trap. I'm sure people knew that. For some reason, I thought you could get blood charges now with the change, but you cannot. Um, so, the basis of what this character is going to be is it's going to be a Mind Over Matter, so it's going to use Arcane Cloak. Um, Full Elemental Conversion Exsanguinate, uh, Exsanguinate Seismic Crit Trapper. Uh, and the reason for that and kind of the little theory behind it is if you use Fizz the Lightning, you get 50% conversion. So 50% of Fizz goes to Lightning. Then on top of 50% conversion, you can farm all the gloves to get 20 to 25 conversion. If you get lucky with Betrayal, you can get 30. So 50 plus 30 is 80. And then Anointing... Winter Spirit here gives 20%, so that's full conversion. Uh, then as a trapper, depending on what I need to do, um, <clears throat> I can get a global 10% pen, then I get 10% pen from, did they change it? Nope, 10% pen from high explosives. And then, God forbid if I actually manage to do it, I could heist farm and farm for an elemental penetration gem, and then we should have reliable shocks, reliable freezes, uh, and then on top of that, we have power charge generation granted through Blast Cascade, um, so this should be pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's gonna be pretty fun um, The clear of exsanguinate trap is pretty cool as well just due to the built-in Chaining mechanic. I think the chaining mechanic is really cool It's kind of why I always like like arc trap and arc mine just having a chain feels really really nice uh, When you're like clearing a hallway, it'll kind of like arc through the hallway and turn Whereas a lot of aoe skills kind of do not have that nature uh, so right now we're pretty much on the goal to getting a five link because we really need to get uh, Cluster Trap for this skill. Um, cluster Trap will be very big. And then eventually, when I do go crit, I'm sure Seismic Trap will feel much better. Uh, just right now, it's like a little bit underperforming. So I want to talk a little bit kind of about this league and the state of the game. So uh, with that being said, um, I really actually like this league mechanic in terms of gambling with all... Well, I'll just go back to town and we'll talk about each one specifically, right? So... From a trade league point of view, I don't like it as much, but I still respect it and like what they did with it, right? So, like, as an example... Actually, where are these guys? Oh, they're all the way over here. So, I haven't done anything but gamble, I guess, in SSF right now. Let's I think see. Rog is fantastic. He is such a cool design. I thought to myself, you know, on League Start, this might not be very good because it, if it doesn't give, like, influence gear or anything... It's probably not really going to hold itself well endgame, but that doesn't matter because the point of the league mechanic is for you to interact with a new league and enjoy that league until you're not having fun anymore. You don't have to do it for the whole entire three-month period, right? 
Um, so I think that ROG is really cool. There is one thing I don't like about ROG, and I'm not trying to be like super picky, but I really am annoyed that they removed Harvest for crafting influenced items, then butchered Aisling, then nerfed Catalyst Crafting, and then they added you to craft through ROG, which is kind of cool, but like kind of like I really like it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I don't like what ROG is doing, but like I just wish I, like I hope that this kind of goes core so that we can like do this more in the future because I really like crafting. It's really fun. What's not fun about crafting is is not spending, you know, hours to learn meta crafting and understanding to block what and to block what, etc. It's much more fun to do something like with ROG where you're a new player, hey, I got some currency I earned from killing monsters, let me just try to figure out what I'm doing, right? And then you don't feel like you're wasting exalt after exalt after exalt. You're just kind of playing with your hard-earned currency that you earned yourself. So this was something that I think that has been really important. Lowering the entry-level crafting has always been a very big thing in PoE that they have not been able to do. We have like essences and fossils and things like that, but unless you get super, super lucky, it's just not really the same, right? Then we've got the Haggler. I think the Haggler is super straightforward. I really like this as well. Uh, great for SSF, great for initial, like, uh, initial, uh, like, wealth, I guess you could say, currency. I've haggled 1.5 exalts on my main character, so that's pretty cool. I, li I like the Haggler a lot. It's, pre it's pretty much oh, like yeah. when you get desperate and you start going to the vendor and start exchanging currency, you could just haggle and get the currency at a better rate. So I really like that. Uh, the Gambler is really cool too. <clears throat> the gambler is really cool because you can search for your base types and then while you're searching for your base types um, you basically have a chance of rolling them um, so basically you can use this to farm currency and trade league you can use this to try to find desired pieces in SSF you can use this as like greater chance orbs to try to influence your unique pieces in SSF so overall I think the gambler is just a really good idea uh, I thought this was gonna be crap but I think they did a really good job with the gambler and then this guy is just straight up exchanging currency for other currency. So Survive. overall, the league itself, I really like. It's more of the state of the game because I feel like when GGG deployed all of these nerfs, don't get me wrong, I'm one of the first people that's going to tell you, I don't mind if a game is more difficult. I just don't want a game to be more tedious and less fun, right? So like currently with the flask system, uh, I think that I read some stuff in the patch notes where we're going to get more... I think in kindling orbs during the leveling process and then <clears throat> there's going to be a recipe to craft like bench craft the guarantee ones that you want i think that's something that we should have had from the beginning you know like there's no reason there's no reason for there to be rng in like every aspect of what we do uh especially when it comes to rolling flask that is kind of the decider between life or death so i think that they kind of slacked a little bit on the flask system um but you know hey at least they kind of identified it and now they are working on fixing it so i'm really happy about that but what i also don't really like is when they deployed these patches or or the nerf patch i guess you could say i wouldn't mind if like the underperforming builds were nerfed less than the major performing builds but the sad reality is that is not at all what happened um, there are some builds, you know, like Righteous Fire, that always struggled with with single target damage and competing up with other builds in clear, but the, the flip side was you could gear the build to be very tanky, right? So it's not like it had a good curve, it's not like it was overpowered by any means. So when GDG deployed their nerfs, they, I mean, it's not just RF, but they killed so many different underperforming builds that yeah i mean majority of the player base does not play those builds but that's the reason why we play path of exile because we can we can pick a weird skill convert it to whatever we want you know sure it might be super inefficient but it's our own creation and it's like what we want to play right so i just hope that in the future they kind of like pay a little bit more attention to more underperforming builds or they just you know straight up buff them uh because when you nerf support gems that like every build uses you're nerfing every single build and they didn't compensate by buffing much. So, you know, again, I don't mind the nerfs. I just want weird builds to be playable and not just be literally useless, right? I'm okay with my Chimera kills taking 30 seconds instead of 30 minutes, right? That's, or I guess Chimera is a bad example because of ads, but like Phoenix or Hydra, I'm okay with them taking, you know, 30 seconds a minute. I just don't want them to take 25 minutes because my build 
physically has no ability to do single target. Uh, so that's, you know, that's just the only part where I'm really concerned. Uh, other than that, I mean, I like the game. I was just kind of losing motivation. Uh, this is also kind of where the burnout comes in. When I got to maps this league, I pressed the G button for my Atlas, and I was just like, oh man, Atlas again. Uh, you know, I would personally much rather them keep the game in the exact same state and just work on the Atlas. Now, of course, that is just my opinion. I'm not saying that's what they have to do. That's just the part of the game that I am, I am really fed up with. But, you know, nonetheless, that's why I'm in SSF. I know that makes no sense, but to me it does. Uh, just getting a different perspective on the Atlas, gonna approach it a different way. Mini K, can you please stop biting my headset? This is not for you to bite, man. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays on twitch.tv slash fox. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.